Young of Cookham. Uh, my Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Minister Lord Wilson of Tredegar. Uh, my Lords, uh, since the House last considered this matter, I have been working closely with officials to deliver this consultation. We have discussed with various stakeholders. Our work on drafting the consultation was completed just before the reshuffle. I have now discussed the issue with the new Secretary of State. I am hopeful that the consultation will now commence very shortly. Lord John of Cookham. I am grateful to my noble friend. In the 12 months since child trust funds matured, over 10,000 children with learning disabilities have been entitled to the proceeds, but only a handful have negotiated the tortuous court of protection process advocated by the Government. But up to 1,000 have had funds released by financial institutions using a streamlined procedure not endorsed by the Government, but likely to be in the consultation document. Doesn't this underline the need for urgency in amending the law so these children can get the funds to which they are entitled? Uh, my, my noble friend uh, doesn't have to impress on me uh, the need for urgency. I've uh, been working hard on this since, I, since this matter was first raised. Uh, I would say, though, that the problem with the industry scheme is not that it's not endorsed by government, but it's inconsistent with the Mental Capacity Act, which is a, a piece of legislation passed by Parliament. Uh, <clears throat> this issue has been raised five times by my noble friend Lord Young, and it is the second time that I have supported him. It's a travesty that those with learning difficulties who are over 18 cannot access their child trust funds. It should not be necessary for parents to apply for a court of protection order on behalf of their adult children. As Lord Young has pointed out, only a handful of parents have negotiated the court of protection route successfully. There are surely less demanding ways to protect their beneficiaries' children's interests. Some financial institutions have released funds using a streamlined procedure where hopefully this will be refined in the consultation paper but is not currently endorsed by government. The issue currently affects 10,000 children with trust funds who presently cannot simply access their cash when they reach the age of 18 without a court order. Can the Minister advise the House as to where the DWP working group has considered this issue? Well, my lords, let me give a short answer to a long question. Um, it's, it's not a question of whether going to court should or should not be necessary. It's necessary because Parliament passed the Mental Capacity Act, which so requires it. In 1995, the Law Commission recommended a small payment scheme that was not taken up by Parliament, but I'm now consulting on it because it seems to me that that is actually the right way forward. Yeah. My Lords, I declare that my interest as Chair of the National Mental Capacity Forum. Will the consultation specifically consider how to exclude coercion, malintent or diversion of the person's funds for use other than purely in their interest if there is no lasting power of attorney or court-appointed deputy? My, my Lords, the noble Baroness has put her finger on the point. What we have to do here is balance the need of, for protecting vulnerable young adults, because that's what they are, with the uh, desire of them and their parents and guardians to access their uh, small amounts of money speedily and efficiently. It's that balance which the, con which the consultation will be aimed at. My Lords, I declare my interest as a Vice President of the National Autistic Society. Seven months ago, I told the Minister that families of autistic youngsters seeking to access the Child Trust Fund from the Mental Capacity Act Code of Practice was a barrier. Mr Justice Hayden in the High Court said the wording of the guidance needed to be revisited. In reply, the Minister said he'd met Mr Justice Hayden and the Government was looking to address this. Can he tell the House, has the Government completed its look and can he now give us an update? Uh, the, uh, my Lords, the position with the Court of Protection is this. We did invite the Court of Protection to look afresh at all their forms. That's a matter for the Court and not the Government. Uh, and the court declined uh, to revise their forms. Uh, what we want to do is to do two things. First of all, consult on the small payment scheme, which I think really is the answer here. And secondly, to uh, educate people. If people apply to the court before they turn 18, there's no time pressure and everything can be completed before the legal problem arises, which is at the point where the child becomes a young adult and the parents, therefore, cannot access the money without an order of the court. Lord Nisby. My Lord, I declare an interest as Chairman of the Children's Mutual 
which I believe was the largest provider of child trust funds, has my noble friend's department consulted with the senior management of the Children's Mutual and perhaps uh, a couple of others of leading providers? Because uh, I do believe when we launched, or when the Child Trust Fund was launched, there was some provision in case of difficulties uh, that might arise at a later time. But in any case, maybe now is the right time to make sure the industry can help. Well, my Lords, we have consulted widely across industry uh, with, with the major providers. Um, I think uh, I have to say to my noble friend, it's the case, I'm afraid, that there was a lacuna here. I think the noble Lord, Lord Blunkett, who I don't think is in place now, candidly accepted that when child trust funds were put in place, no thought was given to people who wouldn't be able to give instructions to banks at the time they turned 18. And the Mental Capacity Act in 2005 only made that position more difficult. So we are now dealing with a problem which has been exacerbated by subsequent legislation. The way to deal with it, I think, is a small payment scheme. That's what we're going to consult on. Lord Ponsonby of Shawbridge. My Lords, a few weeks ago I spoke to Teddy Nyasha, who is Chief Executive of One Family, which is a financial services firm which administers 1.6 million child trust funds. And the central point which Mr Nyasha made to me was that they do make uh, small uh, donations or uh, payments of up to £5,000 uh, through something called the Fair Access Protocol. And what he was seeking was some recognition of that. And if there was some recognition, then there would be a wider access for other uh, charities and uh, providers to expand the uh, fair access protocol. Can the noble Lord the Minister say what he's doing about this? Uh, my Lords, my officials met with Mr Nersha uh, on the 17th of August, and we're well aware uh, of, this, uh, of this proposal. The problem is that it's not a matter of the government recognising the scheme. The scheme, I'm afraid, is inconsistent with the Mental Capacity Act, and it's fundamental to the rule of law that the government has to act in accordance with legislation passed by this Parliament. Uh, and therefore, we can't just bless schemes which are inconsistent with the legislation. If we want to solve this, we have to change the, the, the legislation. That's what the consultation is aimed at. Lord Daddington. My Lord, it is quite clear that the cock-up school of history is uh, being proven to be correct on this issue. Now, the no noble Lord has said that the law is incompatible with the current status and the intention of this. Surely we have enough time in Parliament to actually change the law. Will the government guarantee that we actually get that time? Well, uh, my Lord's guaranteeing government time might be a little above my unpaid pay grade. Uh, but what I can... <laughs> What I, can, what I can say is that uh, there will be a consultation. As the question from the noble Baroness uh, 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 Finlay uh, of Landaff pointed out, there are interests to balance here. There will be, uh, I hope, an eight-week consultation. I would invite everybody to be part of that, following which, if we are going to legislate, I agree that it's something we should be getting on with. Baroness Altman. My Lords, I can only encourage my noble friend in his worthwhile endeavours to sort this out. Um, I think a small payment scheme makes sense, uh, and as the mood of this House shows, there is great uh, support for allowing these uh, dis disabled children, learning disabled children, to access the money they need. In real life, Mikey, who we have heard about in this House before, was able to get out during lockdown, uh, and others' children have been able to access sports therapy. Would he? Uh, be able to acknowledge that this is a monumental success for the private financial industry, which yeah, yeah. for once has done its utmost to try to help people take money out of their accounts, <laughs> which would cost them fees. Well, uh, my Lords, I, I, I do uh, think that the small payment scheme is the way forward. One of the mysteries in this cock-up, if I can use that word from the dispatch box, uh, is, is why a proposal uh, from the Law Commission in 1995 was not picked up, it seems, from Hansard by anybody in 2005 when the Mental Capacity Act was passed. It's that problem I'm now trying to resolve. Lord Treesman. Uh, my Lords, I welcome uh, the noble Lord, Lord Young's timely question. There are some other funds directed at children with distinct needs, and Her Majesty's Government has repeatedly told local authorities that the Premium Plus grant, which is made available to children adopted from care in England and Wales, should be available to children adopted 
from overseas to ensure real equality for these kids who often have significant educational difficulties. Will the Minister reissue the advice that Nick Gibb has issued and enforce the provisions of uh, the Children and Social Work Act 2017 for these adopted children? And will the Government compel recalcitrant local authorities to act speedily and properly? Uh, well, uh, my Lords, I, I think with respect, that's a question for the uh, Department for Education. I will pass it on to them and I will ask them to write uh, to the Noble Lord with an answer to his question. My Lords, the time allowed for this question has elapsed.